Steve Bannon is one of Trump's allies. Obviously, he was a chief strategist who worked in the White House. He has publicly acknowledged that he advised Bolsonaro. This is Bannon back in November as he was pushing the mis misinformation surrounding this election. Look in the streets of Brazil. Look at the great patriots in Brazil that had a lot of danger to themselves have come forward in the streets of Brazil. This is the people saying, no, you didn't follow the Constitution. You use these machines, you use the judiciary to shut us down in the media, and we're not going to tolerate it. It's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. And we're seeing how it's playing out now. John Avalon is here to discuss. It is remarkable to see. It wasn't just Steve Bannon who's been advising him. It was also Jason Miller was part of those mm -hmm. conversations. He had made several trips. Bolsonaro is actually in Florida right now, we yeah. should note. Uh, what has stood out to you about the takeaways and the similarities between what happened then, what happened after the election, and now what we're seeing play well, out? Of course, the echoes are unmistakable. Uh, I mean, you've got a... It's not even really echoes, right? It's just the... It's I mean, look, you know, same, Mark yeah. Twain said history doesn't repeat, but sometimes it rhymes. Yeah. But this is a very close rhyme yeah. because the people fanning the flames on social media here in the U.S. are some of the sort of the Trumpist wing of, of, of that crew who'd been flanning the flames around the Stop the Steal movement, very explicitly, not just Steve Bannon, as you say. Um, there has been a move to deny the legitimacy of this election. Um, from some of Trump's former advisors saying, do not concede. Uh, and here you have this slightly delayed reaction, but a direct attack on the Capitol by a mob. Uh, and, and it just, I think, speaks to the, the fact that democracy being under assault is not over. Uh, and some of the people using social media to encourage these sorts of, of, of mob attacks um, are, are, are some of the people who, from the sort of self-styled populist nationalist movement that they seek to make international. There was a, a great piece republished this morning in the New York Times from months ago that w just walked through the months and years of lies about election fraud yes. that Bolsonaro um, made and continues to make that, that led to this, right, that lead to this. And it, the parallels are just so striking with the months and years of lies that continue on now. So I think the question beyond what we saw happen in Brazil is th those lies from those leaders continue. That's exactly So then what? Well, look, I think it highlights the fact that there is a struggle between disinformation and democracy and that disinformation can create real world impacts. I mean, the, the role of bots, for example, in Brazil, spreading disinformation, amplifying false messages, but also being done here from the United States by some of the former President Trump's closest advisors. You know, it, that, that I think just speaks to the fact that the disinformation flow around the world because of social media is international. But do you know what this uh, do you remember? Right. Because we live this. Yes. We all love this. And people would say, why do you guys keep covering January 6th? Why are you trying to divide the country? What are you trying to divide? It's like, no. There was an attack on our democracy. This is important. This should be the lead story every single night on every news broadcast until people realize. And then you had all these voices on the conservative side or non lack of voices not calling this out or criticizing the news media for reporting on this. This is what happens when you allow authoritarian type behavior from leaders. This is what happens when yeah. you allow misinformation to, get, when you give it a platform. For no, uh, look, I, I think that is exactly right, because this is a real world impact two years delayed right. in another country. And it just shows that this is not academic. Until there's accountability, until we really get better at combating disinformation in a way that's consistent with our liberal values as, as, a, as a democracy, not only here at home, but abroad, I think these sorts of things will continue occurring. And the fact that it's some of the same players spreading the same degrees of election lies and misinformation, having this real-world effect in, our, in the, you know, the Southern Hemisphere, I, I think should be a wake-up call to us all as Brazil today uh, seeks to reestablish the rule of, of democracy. Yeah, we'll see what Republicans say about this. Democrats want them to weigh in and condemn what's happening yeah. in Brazil. That, One thing I will note, also, at yeah. uh, 345 today, the U.S. ambassador to Brazil is getting sworn in, so she has, obviously, a, a full plate. John Avalon, thank you for... Right. for Laying out what's really important here, and it does, it has global impacts, as yeah. you were saying. Thank you, John. This has been top of mind for you for years, so for the last two years. Thank yeah. you, John. Thanks, Appreciate guys. it. This is what it looks like in Brasilia, Brasilia right now. That's where troops are lining up across from those protesters. Again, look at the pictures on your screen. The deadline to clear them now just four hours away after this happened yesterday. <laughs> Thank you.
Those rioters, their supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro, stormed and vandalized Brazil's Congress, Supreme Court, and Presidential Palace on Sunday. Security forces used tear gas to clear protesters and regain control of the buildings. Officials declaring overnight the riots are over. At least 400 people are under arrest this morning. The unrest coming a week after the inauguration of President uh, Lula da Silva, who is vowing to punish those responsible for the attacks. Straight now to scene is Rafael Romo tracking the developments for us this morning. Rafael, good morning to you. What is the situation in Brazil's capital this morning? Good morning, Don. Well, it's finally under control, but it looks like a war zone. And allow me to paint the picture of what transpired in the last 24 hours. Imagine for a moment that the January 6th mob here in the United States had not only breached the Capitol, but also the White House and the Supreme Court building. That's exactly what happened in Brazil Sunday, an insurrection that ended with the arrest of at least 400 people, uh, left the main public buildings in the country inoperable, and, and deepened a political crisis that has been brewing for months. Brazil boiling over. Supporters of former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro storm key buildings in the country's capital Sunday, breaching security barriers and temporarily occupying the country's Congress, Presidential Palace and Supreme Court. Masses of protesters flooded the country's seat of power, many dressed in the colors of Brazil's flag yellow and green, fueled by anger and distrust over Bolsonaro's defeat in a runoff election last October, where he lost by less than two percentage points to current president Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. Protesters threw objects and scaled the roofs of buildings while clashing with police who responded with tear gas. At least one protester was seen sitting at the desk of Brazil's Congress president. CNN Brazil reports the floor of the Congress building was flooded after the sprinkler system activated when protesters attempted to set fire to the carpet. By evening, police began dispersing the rioters from buildings and arrested hundreds of people who were detained in buses before being taken to the police station. President Lula da Silva, who was inaugurated just a week ago, described the events as barbaric and vowed to punish the people responsible. Those people that we call fascists, we call them everything that's abominable in politics. They invaded the government headquarters and they invaded the Congress like vandals, destroying everything in their path. President Lula da Silva also blamed his predecessor for the lack of security in the capital, where Bolsonaro's supporters have been camped out for over a week. Bolsonaro, who is currently in Florida, denounced what he called the depredations and invasions of public buildings in a tweet, adding that peaceful and lawful demonstrations are part of democracy. But critics say Bolsonaro may have stirred up the crowds by repeatedly saying, without evidence, that he questioned the integrity of the country's electronic voting system. More details have emerged overnight about how violent some of the pro-Bolsonaro protesters became. Done. At least 12 journalists were attacked, robbed, or had their equipment destroyed. Now back to you. Ah, just an awful situation. Thank you, Rafael. I appreciate that.